If your mix sounds good in your studio, in your home, but once you take it elsewhere and listen on any other system it falls apart, it means you have a monitoring problem. I'll show you how you can improve your monitoring using simple tools like a small mirror, a tape measure, and some masking tape. Just a quick reminder, in the description below you'll find a link to my newest course, Most Common Mixing Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. You'll find a lot of great tricks there. Now imagine your monitor has too much pink in the image. Can you set natural colors on that display so the image looks natural on every other monitor? No. And it's the same with sound. All our decisions during recording and mixing come from what we hear. If you have a dip in a certain frequency range, you can't set your recording and your mix correctly. The sound we hear is basically two sources. The direct sound from the speakers plus all the reflections from the room that overlap with it. If we place the monitors in the wrong spot, those reflections will combine out of phase with the direct sound and they will create holes in the frequency response. So we need to place the monitors in a position where those holes are as small as possible, where the monitoring is as even as possible. How can we improve that? The first thing is the location of the monitors in the room. Set up your monitors and your listening line along the longer axis of the room. It doesn't matter if it's a living room, a bedroom, or a workspace. You need symmetry. For example, if you have a window on the left and a wall on the right, cover the window with a curtain or a heavy drape. If you have a bookshelf on the right, try to put something similar on the left. That symmetry helps you hear both speakers in the same way. A common rule of thumb is to place your listening position at 38% of the room length. But this is very hard in home setups and even in professional studios. I've seen many people place their monitors about one meter from the wall, thinking it's a perfect compromise. But according to many manufacturers, that is actually the worst place to put your monitors because it can create a narrow cancellation around about 103 hertz. And later, you can't really fix it with any EQ. That's why a lot of people recommend moving the monitors closer to the wall. Then the cancellation shifts away from around 100 hertz and lands more around 400 to 800 hertz, which is much easier to deal with than holes in the low end. In that situation, I recommend moving the monitors to about 20 centimeters from the wall. Of course, the monitor will then produce more low end, sometimes even by six decibels, because there's a wall right behind it. But basically, every speaker has a rear control to cut or boost the low frequencies. So you can reduce that extra low end on the speaker. And with a simple absorber, you can tame those 400 to 800 hertz reflections. Your head and the two monitors should form an equilateral triangle. If your monitors are 90 centimeters apart, your head should be 90 centimeters from each monitor. If the room is bigger and you space the monitors 1.3 meters apart, your head should be 1.3 meters from each monitor. For the center point, we assume the center of your head. Some acousticians use a point slightly behind your head because you naturally lean back a bit to keep a balanced listening position. The simplest way to measure this is with a basic tape measure. Measure the distance between the monitors and then the distance from each monitor to your head position. Once the distances are correct, you need the right angle. If the angle is too narrow, your stereo image will collapse. If the angle is too wide, what's in the center of your mix, kick, snare, bass, vocals, will disappear. That's why this is so important. There is one simple rule, 60 degrees, and this is where the mirror helps. Every monitor has an acoustic axis. Most often, it's defined by the tweeter, or sometimes a point between the tweeter and the mid-range driver. Check your monitor's manual and find where that axis is. You stay seated in your listening position the whole time. Hold a small mirror at the axis of the left monitor. You do not change the distance between the monitors or your listening position. Then adjust the monitor angle until you can see your reflection in the mirror. Of course, you'll need a second person for this. Once that's done, move the mirror to the other monitor and adjust its angle until you can also see your face. And the last thing we need to take care of is the first reflections. The reflections coming from the sidewalls and the ceiling should not interfere with the direct sound from the monitors. How do we do that? 
Again, the mirror helps. You sit in your listening position. Ask a helper to hold a small mirror against the left wall. They slide the mirror along the wall until, from your seat, you can see the reflection of the left monitor in the mirror. Mark that spot on the wall with tape. Then keep sliding the mirror until you can see the reflection of the other monitor on the same wall. Mark that spot with tape as well. Do the same on the opposite wall. You need to find the mirror position, where you can see the reflection of each monitor. It's also good to do this on the ceiling and on the wall behind you. Wherever you place the tape, that's your first reflection point from the left and right monitor. The simplest solution is to build a DIY absorber. Use mineral wool, cover it with fabric, and hang it at those points. A high-density mineral wool, around 50 to 80 kilograms per cubic meter, works best. And a thickness of around 10 centimeters will help a lot. Also remember, a bookshelf behind you is a great diffuser. A bed behind you in a bedroom can also work as both an absorber and a diffuser. Of course, some of you might be thinking, okay, why should I run around the room looking for the sweet spot and symmetry? Why not just use a calibration system like ARC and let it fix the speakers where they are. Yes, it will calibrate them and improve things. But you're forgetting that if you place the speakers correctly first, the improvement will be much more effective and your monitoring will be much, much better. Look at this simple example. I use X Monitor from IK Multimedia. It's built into my speakers, the iLouds. It's also sold separately as an independent ARC system. And it can be used with any other speakers. Here are the measurements before any correction. In dark green, you can see one speaker. In light green, you can see the other speaker. Here, symmetry and speaker placement were not really set up properly. And look at the differences between the speakers. You can see a six decibel difference. And in some spots, that difference is even eight to nine decibels. That's a massive difference. Look how different the top end is. You can clearly see that one speaker will play very differently than the other. How are you supposed to mix in conditions like this? How do you place things in the center when everything plays differently? ARC improved it, and I'll show you by how much. It's much, much better. Here you can see each speaker marked with a different color. It reduced the difference between the speakers quite nicely. But as you can see, it couldn't really fix the high end. So the left speaker will still sound different than the right. Try setting great symbols in these conditions or try catching sibilance. Good luck. Now pay attention. I only improved the symmetry between the speakers and their placement in the room. And notice, this is still before any correction of the differences between the speakers. Here it's about a four decibel difference, but only around 60 hertz. The rest is fairly even. Right away, the speakers will sound much more consistent, and it will be much easier to set everything on them. What happened after correction? It evened it out much, much better than before. There is actually just one small point where these speakers differ. It's about 1.5 decibels. The top end is beautiful and even. The low end is much more even too. You can clearly see that the position of the speakers and where they're aimed matters a lot. So in my opinion, instead of spending crazy money on more and more expensive speakers, buy slightly cheaper ones and keep some money for a calibration system. Tune your monitoring in your room. For me, it was like discovering America. It improved my mixes significantly. Remember, this is only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to acoustics. Write in the comments how you deal with it. What do you mix on? Do you calibrate your speakers? Or do you run around the room looking for the sweet spot? If you enjoyed the video, subscribe and leave a like.